I have this missionary call that I just feel like the church is supposed to be uh, involved in mission. And so if that's going to happen, reproduction is going to happen. And for me, I, honestly, this might sound trite, but I read this poem a long time ago and it really impacted me and was, I don't want to be a king, I want to be a kingmaker. It's one line. And I, I think part of my calling is to believe in other people and um, try to find ways for them to get into where they're at. And church planting is such an incredible way to do that. The first time we did it, I was like so frightened. I mean, like, because uh, we sent our youth pastor out and I really liked him a lot. I still like him. He's been pastoring now for 20 years or whatever. But the problem was, we kind of told everybody, some of you are supposed to go with Steve. And for me, I thought, everyone's going to go with Steve. <laughs> because I wanted to go with Steve. I mean, Steve is this dynamic young leader. I really loved him. And so, so there is that nervousness. But after you do it a bunch of times, you realize there's, God's economy is different than the way we can construe things normally. We think we got to keep people. We've got to kind of have a container. Most pastors I know are trying to con restrain their church and get everybody to stick around. Uh, but I, I honestly, I don't have that perspective. My perspective is, and I say this to our church all the time, everyone's leaving. I'm going to leave. Everyone's leaving. So be praying about what God wants you to leave to go do. I was frightened when Steve left. But here's the cool thing. Steve left, and our church wasn't hurt by it. And he took like 100 people. Our church literally didn't recognize or didn't see people be gone the next week because this, this economy and multiplication is so weird. It's not a magic trick, but there is something different that happens when you're not trying to hold on to people. A church planting does create disequilibrium. And I want to tell you this, and if whoever's listening, listen to this part. Your church needs disequilibrium. If you're trying to get balance in your church, you're becoming predictable. And you can't have total disequilibrium. You have to have stabilizing factors. But if it's all stable and all, all tame, your church is going to get stuck. So what happens is like the church, in fact, it's just a few blocks from here that I planted in 91. 18 years in, people would come into our church and think it was a church plant because it kind of was. Because we kept sending people out and we had to recalibrate in any system there has to be a recalibration occasionally or it becomes static and predictable and eventually it dies that's what happens to churches so it allows our church to have a calculated disequilibrium and you know you know it's not completely calculated there was a time when we sent phil out where i thought i'd killed our church <laughs> fortunately we've kind of bounced back and things are great I would say don't be afraid. I mean, uh, here's, here's what you get out of it. Like if, if we just use Phil as an example, like last week we had, we had about 230 people at church. Not, numbers are just what they are. Um, we sent Phil out a year and a half ago, and he had about 100. So total worshiping community we had was over 300 people. We can't get 300 people in our building. And... I get the privilege of cheering Phil on, and Phil goes on and changes the world, and I, I get to play a part in that. It's a win-win-win everywhere, every direction. So it's just hard, and it takes sacrifice. But what else, is, what else are churches supposed to do? Is it enough just to survive? I don't, I don't buy it. I don't think it's true. Um, I got so, and continue to get so much encouragement um, as, as a church planter. It can be hard and scary, and... So I would just kind of pay it forward a little bit and encourage people, if you feel like deep inside this like draw, it's kind of crazy idea to start a new um, you know, faith community centered around Jesus and God's love and the Spirit's movement, like go and do it and make it happen. And we're with you um, here in the Covenant family and beyond. We're like, we're, we're with you. And so, um, yeah, that's what I would say. I've felt really supported and encouraged, and I want to be that for other people. We want to plant out of the garden. That's kind of the vision, too, when Emmanuel planted us, was kind of plant us with the idea that we would also send off new expressions of church um, moving forward. So, I, yeah, we're pretty excited about that um, in the future. And So I just say, yeah, I just encourage you totally. And um, 
yeah, people encouraged me and told me that it was hard, too. They told me that they were real with me. It's going to be super hard. And um, just like any big dream, it's going to be hard, but it's the best. And uh, we need more churches, too. We need more communities centered around God's love. So go for it.